So, David, a question I keep on getting from many farmers is the, the fact we've had this very, very strange weather over the whole season. How much impact did the volcano in Iceland have on all of this? Sean, it's a good question. And, um, and a lot of people are asking the same thing, that, uh, you know, everything, there's so much, so many geophysical uh, events that are happening around the world. Um, it's been a crazy year. I mean, go right back to January. And um, and we have seen um, incredible conditions around the world. We've had um, uh, volcanic eruptions. We've had earthquakes. We've had um, strange, wacky weather from record droughts and forest fires in Russia to landslides and flooding rains and searing heat in eastern North America. It's almost as if the prairies have been left out in the cold. I mean, we have seen in Canada, for example, uh, in in from January the first, we've never had a warmer year in in Canada from January the first to the end of July. And I know that some of your people are saying, "Well, we, where is ours?" I mean, it's it's like nature's been unfair. And a lot of people are going back, and because it's been so strange uh, around the world, they're wondering if, in fact, that um, that um, volcanic eruption in Iceland had an effect on it. Uh, I feel very confident that it had no effect on it. Um, it had certainly an effect on flying and the economy in, in Western Europe. We saw clearly effects of that. But the volcano was, compared to most volcanoes, like Mount St. Helens, for example, it was much smaller uh, than Mount St. Helens. And we know that Mount St. Helens had really a negligible effect on, on weather conditions in Western Canada. Uh, the fact that it was in Iceland, where the prevailing winds would take it to Europe, and disperse the the uh, uh, plume elsewhere. Um, therefore, I would say it, it really had, apart from maybe causing a couple of brilliant sunrises and sunsets, it had really zero effect on the, the growing conditions. I think for me, what I saw in the weather pattern this year on the prairies was the fact that uh, uh, several stubborn, very slow motion storms. You know, Sean, I always think the best thing about prairie weather and Canadian weather is it hits and runs. It doesn't stand around and torment you and clobber you like it does in other parts of the world. And what we saw this spring, though, when those, those systems came from the Pacific, bumped into some cold air, were very sluggish, slow-motion storms. I mean, I couldn't get over the fact that it was raining in the rain from a storm in Wednesday didn't finish raining until Saturday. I mean, you just don't see that on the prairies. You see it raining on Wednesday and then finally drying out on Thursday. And uh, so very slow motion. Some, some, in fact, some storms just sort of uh, left and moved from, from west, west to east as they do. And then they double back, almost hit you again from the rear. I mean, it was just uh, really unfair in, in many ways. And then when the warm season, supposedly whatever the warm season was, came, then you saw a lot more convective activity, the kind of typical thing that you do see on the prairies. But some of it was very severe. We saw the record hailstorm in Calgary. We saw tornadoes in, uh, in uh, parts of Saskatchewan, heavy doses of, of rain. It was almost as if nature was in its extreme. And, and in all of those cases, was giving you lots of rain. It was never sort of just um, a strong wind uh, uh, without the precipitation. It seemed to be the common denominator throughout the spring and the summer was when it rained, it seemed to rain a lot. And, and really the lack of sunshine. Uh, you know, in some of the, you know, Alberta and Saskatchewan, for example, are the sunniest, prayer, are sun, sunniest provinces in Canada. And it just seemed to be absent this, uh, this year. Uh, not ruinous for everybody. I mean, I think it's been sort of hit and miss. But generally speaking, it's been a hit on the economy. Some farmers have done fairly well. Uh, they're all right, at least. Um, others are just, it's almost ruinous for them. So um, it's not as if it's, we've seen worse situations, believe it or not, but um, it's still pretty, uh, it's still pretty grim. And, uh, but it's not over. It's not over until, uh, and, and, until we, we, we see what the, the fall is going to bring. And, uh, and the hope is that we can still get some good growing and, and drying and harvesting days uh, before we have to call it quits. So, David, if it wasn't the volcano, uh, like as you said, across the world, we've had some abnormal temperatures, we've had earthquakes, we've had uh, a number of different in incredibly, I guess, interesting weather situations. Why? Well, Sean, that is the million-dollar question. I mean, uh, we, we do a good job of describing uh, what we've had, but not necessarily why. 
And um, it could be several factors. I mean, I don't want to go to the climate change issue because, I mean, that that is debatable and, and contentious. Um, um, I think, in fact, we had the El Nino kind of a, of a winter um, produced in Canada, the warmest and the driest winter on, on record, not necessarily everywhere, but certainly we know from the Olympics and we know in the north and we know in many parts of eastern Canada that's what we've seen. The records are irrefutable about that. We have seen this right now as this could very well be the warmest uh, year on record in, in Canadian history. So a very strong, persistent, uh, long-lifed uh, El Nino, and um, followed quickly by a La Nina, this cooling phase. And typically that doesn't always happen. Um, and I think it's just been, you know, the, the world seems to be upset. Uh, something is volatile. Something is happening there. And as I said before, it's this, these storm systems, which have been uncharacteristically frequent, I mean, these cold lows that we, there's the scourge of everybody because it brings a lot of cool and, and wet conditions. These were just dominating the prairie conditions. And the jet streams seem to be a little stubborn and staying over the southern prairies. And in June, which is often the wettest month in the prairies, instead of moving northward, which it often does, from a southern prairie situation to a northern prairie, and you finally start seeing some summer weather and dry periods and, and more the concern about when is it going to rain, not when is it going to stop raining. Um, we didn't see that. Um, the jet stream stayed where it is, and uh, it's a combination of water temperatures and the oceans, uh, sea and ice boundaries. Again, Sean, I, uh, I, if I knew exactly why, um, we would probably know in six months, a uh, year, when we study it more intensely. But um, right now, we just uh, can describe it, the fact that the pressure pattern set up, uh, affected by El Nino and then the transition to La Nina very quickly, um, that produced this kind of, of, of strange uh, year. I mean, the weather is so strange nowadays. You know, let, let me talk just briefly about, the, um, about trends. Um, and I think that one of the toughest professions in Canada, and I've said this for, for a decade now, has been farming. I mean, farming has always been challenging. But the fact that is you can't figure out what the weather is going to be. I mean, and whatever happened, Sean, to normal? I mean, normal is we base everything, our seeding decisions, our harvesting decisions, our policies, our, our um, you know, building of buildings and everything based on normal, the kind of weather that our, our teachers and grandparents told us we'd expect. And, uh, and if anything, in the last few years, it's been more challenging. We've been seeing more surprises more flip-flops, more jokers in the weather deck, so to speak. And, um, and it's been challenging, particularly for, uh, for Canadian farmers, and, and may continue to be that way. It's almost as if nature seems upset and is dr drifting from one kind, of a trend, or one kind of a regime to another, and it produces a lot more volatile, chaotic kind of weather. It's a, we've always known, Sean, that the weather is hard to figure out, but... Um, now it's becoming the seasons have become difficult to figure out. It's almost a crapshoot, you know. It's, it's anything is possible. And, of course, with farmers who are directly in the bullseye of nature um, have a hard time figuring that out. And, uh, and that's just why you have these kind of um, almost, uh, uh, you know, bonanza years to ruin this year. So, I mean, it is, uh, uh, if you would just give us normal weather, nature, uh, we'd be happy. Um, and, Things would be uh, a lot easier. They would, absolutely, uh, totally. I mean, it would because everything we've done in the past has been planned based on normal. I mean, you farmers know that in a in a normal sequence of years, you're going to have a couple of tough years, but you're also going to have some very good years. And um, and and now, when you go through a, a period of um, you know of extremes, you know, one extreme to the other. I mean, whatever happened in between, which is what you should expect more often. And, you know, I mean, old-time farmers will say to you, well, gee, I can remember back when, you know, in 51 when it was the warmest or the, 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 the driest on record, and then in, you know, um, 89 when it was the wettest. And, and that's the kind of lifetime you'd have, not that one year is the driest, followed by the next year, which is the, the wettest. I mean, for many, much of the decade that we've just finished, Sean, it's about how dry it's been on the prairies. It's almost as if nature has tried to make up for this all in one swoop. 
you know, I mean, I, I think about Edmonton, for example. This has been the, uh, the driest 10 years on record in that area. I mean, in the city, trees are dying and farmers just can't uh, uh, find enough water. And then almost totally um, a turnaround in, in one year. I mean, I suppose if you averaged all that, you'd probably have something very close to normal. But the reality is it didn't, didn't occur in normal amounts. And that's why I think uh, growing has been uh, uh, such a challenge for, for, uh, uh, for entrepreneurs on the prairies. Well, David, thank you very much for joining us today. And as usual, uh, we love to hear from you. And we'll talk to you again very uh, soon in the future. I look forward to that, Sean. Thank you. Bye-bye.